What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to explain to you the difference between is and equals and is not and does not equal in Python. And it's a little bit more complicated than you think. So let's get right into it. We're going to start with a simple example of two integers. We're going to call them a equals 10 and b equals 10 as well. And I think most of you know the basic difference between the two operators. So equals actually compares the values and is compares the identity. And the same goes for does not equal and for is not. We're comparing the identity with this one and we're comparing the values with this one. So if I ask print a equals b, this compares the value. So is the value 10 the same as the value 10? And if I print a is b, it is asking is a the same thing is a the same object entity variable reference whatever as b is this actually the same thing. And you might say, okay, this is obvious. So why make a video about this? Because this is obviously true. And this is false, because we have two variables, a and b that are obviously different. And we have the same value 10 and 10. So this one is true. And this one is false, right? Uh, well, it's not that easy. Because if I run this now, you're going to see that both statements return true. And this is why things are a bit more complicated than you initially might think. So we can look at the ID function, if I call ID on a, which is the identity function. And if I do the same thing with B, you're going to see that they actually have the same identity, even though we have two variables, we have the same object. Now, of course, if I say B plus equals two or something, you're going to see that the identity changes. So it's actually not the exact same object anymore. And obviously, also the comparison is false. Um, but up until now, equals and is behave the same way. Why is that? Well, it's a little bit more complicated. But Python has a uh, plain integer value stored in in an array already. So I think as far as I know, it is negative five up until uh, 256. Is that correct? These values are stored in an array. So in Python, when you create a variable with a value 10, for example, you just refer to that already stored value 10. If you do the same thing with 3000, it's not going to work anymore. So there's still a difference between PyCharm and the idle. So you're going to see as far as I know, that when I pass 3000, we're still going to have the same effect. Uh, there you go. But interestingly, if you go ahead and run the idle, which is uh, the integrated development and uh, learning environment, if I run this here, you're going to see a difference. I hope the difference is actually because of the idle and not because of the Python version. Uh, that was that would be a, a bit embarrassing. But if I say a equals 10, and b equals 10 here, and then a is b, you can see true. If I say a equals 3000, and b equals 3000, a is b, it's false. And in the idle, you can actually see how this works. In PyCharm, it uh, works in a different way. Maybe it's also because I'm doing this year life in the shell. Uh, however, this is still true. If we go above 256 or below negative five, uh, this has a different meaning because when we choose values from that range, we take an already existing array and we just point to the values. So when I create the value five here, and when I create the value, come on, when I create the value five here, we're both pointing both these variables are pointing to the same thing. So we don't need two different objects. And because of that, they have the same identity. However, I can also show you the difference here, not only in the idle, if we go ahead and we say a equals five and b equals zero, and then I say b plus equals five. So now b is also five, but I didn't initialize it at five uh, as five, you can see that it's still true, it still works the same way. However, if I do this in a different way, if I go with 3000 here, and I go with 3000 here, they still have the same value. But they're not having the same identity, because I didn't create them, I didn't initialize them with the same value. So as you can see, it's a little bit more complicated than you might initially think, not necessarily because of the operator, but because of the way Python works behind the scenes. So the operator is quite simple. It basically just tells you is a the same thing as b. It's the same thing as comparing the identity. So is is essentially the same thing as saying, uh, print ID a equals IDB, if they have the same identity, they're going to be the same object. 
So you can see that for certain integer values, this works. So even if I go with 102, and I don't have to initialize zero, I can also initialize 100 and then add two, this is still going to work. This is still going to result in the same object because we have these plain integer values already stored. If I do the same thing with a 1000, it is not going to work anymore. You can see false, it's still equal. They have the same value, but they're not the same object. They have different identities. Now, when we get to a little bit more complex data structures like lists, things get more straightforward and simple. So if I have a list A equals one, two, three, four, five, and I have the same list called B, if I now compare them, they obviously have the same values, but they're not the same object. This is just how it works for lists. Nothing special here. However, when we talk about strings, things get interesting again. So if I go ahead and say a equals hello world, and b equals hello world as well. If I now go ahead and say a equals b, and a is b, we're going to see that this is true. Why is that? Now, first of all, let me show you that we can break that by just saying b is hello, and then we're going to say b plus equals world. So now they still have the same value but they're not the same object anymore. Now, I'm not going to go into all the details for why this is, but essentially we have something called an interning table. However, I'm not even sure that this is how strings are handled because this is how integers are handled. Um, because I have read online that with strings, it has something to do with folding and, and all that. But essentially, when you create a string, and you create a second string with the exact same value, you initialize the second string with the exact same value, it just uses the first string, it just references the first string. Um, and then of course, you can you can manipulate it and all that. But uh, as long as they say uh, stay the same, they're the same object, they're referencing the same object. So this is how it works with strings if you initialize them both with the same value. Now, one thing that I haven't tested actually is what if I first define and I'm not even sure what's going to happen here. What if I first define that so I initialize it with a different string, but at the moment I initialize this, this is already the same string. So I'm not sure what's going to happen here. Okay, no, they have to be initialized with the same value. But if that happens, uh, they're stored in a table and we just reference the already existing string with the same value. So this is how it works. And we can also do this manually. I'm not going to do that in this video, but you can also do this manually uh, with the sys module. So you just import sys and from sys, you can use the function uh, intern, and you can intern a string and uh, you can do this process manually. And this is something that is done in C Python. It's not done in all Python implementations. Uh, but this is how this operator behaves with strings. So that's it for this little educational video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.